This is a special story, an American story about a small town in rural New York that would change the course of motion picture history by following the dream of one man and the stubborn ingenuity of another. Together, they would inspire the creation of an American cultural icon, the drive-in movie. Everything about the Schoharie Free Street movies in 1917 was revolutionary. The movies were regularly scheduled every summer Thursday, like a theater. You could watch from the car or from the street. There was dancing. And for 25 years, all of this was free. Nowhere else in the world was doing anything like this. The Free Street movies were, was the brainchild of a legendary Schoharie mayor, Perry Taylor. And Perry Taylor came up with this idea in 1917 um, in an effort to try and find a way to help the local economy. Uh, Schoharie in the mid-teens was a place uh, that was being ravaged by agricultural foreclosures. And the merchants in the village of Schoharie were starting to get very nervous as the economy was beginning to shrink, and they had to come up with a radical idea. Perry Taylor was a man who was both a dreamer and a doer. And he was an avid moviegoer. And so he came up with this crazy idea in 1917, which he presented in May of 1917 to the Board of Trade, which was composed of all the merchants in the town of Schoharie. And he asked everybody in the room, he's like, how many people here like motion pictures? And most of the, most of the audience raised their hand and said, yes, we love motion pictures. How many of you would go, if there was a free movie uh, within five or 10 miles of here, how many of you would go? And everybody in the room raised their hands and said, yes, we would absolutely go see a free movie if it was nearby. And then he started to walk through the economics of it. How many of you, when you go to the pictures, do you buy hot dogs? Do you buy ice cream? And everybody raised their hand. And at that point, Perry Taylor presented the audience. He's like, look, I want to show free movies here in Schoharie every Thursday night during the summer. And people are going to come and they're going to see the movies and they're going to have a good time and they're going to spend money in your stores on Main Street. And that's exactly what happened. On June 7th, 1917, at 8 p.m., with a rented projector mounted on a flatbed truck and a screen attached to the lamppost in front of the courthouse, the Board of Trade screened The Awakening of Helena Ritchie, starring Ethel Barrymore. The free movies were an immediate hit, and throughout the late teens and the roaring 20s, Schoharie was the place to be on warm summer Thursdays. Thousands came from all over the region to watch movies, socialize, and yes, spend money. The party nearly came to an end in the late 20s. Al Jolson's jazz singer in 1927 ushered in the era of the talking motion picture, and suddenly the silent films of the free movies were a thing of the past. Anxious to keep their popular summer program alive, the Board of Trade turned to their young head projectionist, Edward Scribner. Born in 1908, the Scribner farm was one lost to the economic distress of the time. His family moved to the village of Schoharie, and at the age of 14, this electrical whiz kid became the assistant to Matt Marinus, then the head projectionist. It is a role that Ed would assume around 1928. He was in his early 20s when he took over as the head projectionist uh, of the Schoharie free, free Street movies. And he started going to the major players. He went to Westinghouse, he went to RCA, and he said, look, we need to show outdoor talkies in Schoharie. And the big manufacturers came back and said, well, it's not possible, and it's certainly not possible on a small town budget. And Ed decided he disagreed with that verdict, and he said, I think I can figure it out. And he did. With the assistance of a small manufacturer in Rochester, he managed to acquire the sound heads and he cobbled together basically the first outdoor talkie projection system. And he did that in 1931. June 11th of 1931, they had a big hullabaloo. We're going to show the first outdoor talkies. Uh, they, went, they went to try and show them and there was a problem. Uh, we had our first show. Well, in the theater, the movie projectors are mounted up high in the balcony they tilt down and, and uh, to shine on the screen. Out of the street, we were down low and we had to we had to tilt them up just slightly. But when the, when the projectors were up in that area, if any oil dipped out, it, it would not 
if the optical system of the sound did. But with the, in our position, it did. And I got the royalty down, and the sound started going down and down and down and down. So the next day we found out what it was. And uh, we corrected it so it can't, couldn't happen again. And we uh, uh, had a, a, a good show. With the sound projection system worked out, the world's first outdoor talkie was shown at the Schoharie Free Street Movies on June 18, 1931. Their first film was George Abbott's Manslaughter, starring Claudette Colbert and Frederick March. And for the next two years, Schoharie would remain the only place in the world you could enjoy outdoor talkies. Yet somehow the motion picture herald forgot. On August 15th of 1931, the International Trade Publication for Motion Picture Exhibition ran a modest notice of Schoharie's open-air talkie system. Then two years later, when Schoharie was in its third season of outdoor talkies, the Motion Picture Herald ran an article proclaiming Camden, New Jersey's drive-in theater, patented by Richard Hollingshead, as the first of its kind. When Ed Scribner reminded the Motion Picture Herald of Schoharie's 16-year outdoor movie history, and its 1931 conversion to sound, the Motion Picture Herald retracted Camden's standing as the original. Nevertheless, Richard Hollingshead continues to be broadly cited as the inventor of the drive-in movie for his short-lived operation in Camden. The outdoor talkies were an even bigger hit in Schoharie than their silent predecessors. Not even the Great Depression could put a dent in the attendance. Free entertainment in the dark economic climate proved a draw for Schoharie. Seasonal attendance crested 100,000 people, and it was more than sheer numbers. The Schoharie free open-air movies were an extremely important part of the social and civic fabric of the Schoharie Valley. It was a, a very unusual time. It, it was a very popular time. The, the free movies brought a lot of people in to see the movies, a lot of farmers, their families, and the wives come in and did their grocery shopping for perhaps a week at a time. You could rent a chair, one of those wooden chairs, 10 cents to, to see the movie. My father had the job of taking the light bulbs out of the street lamps, both sides of where the audience were parked in front of the courthouse. It was a traditional thing. They, they even closed down the main street, which seems kind of hard to believe. In a, this day and age. Any through traffic had to go around the back streets. Another thing you have to realize is that the main street of Skahari looked a lot different than it does today. There was at least four grocery stores, a couple hardware stores, a couple clothing stores. So it was really an economic center. And they used these films, the dances, the band concerts to draw people from, not only from Skahari County, but from I imagine outlying areas. I know there was a lot of people there. For some people, this was the only time during the week that they got together for any sort of social event. Many people lived on farms and rural areas. They used Thursday nights for their community gathering, their grocery shopping. Children got together to play games before the movies. And it was a time of friendship and fellowship. That is what the Schoharie Free Street Movies was really all about. It was a celebration of community. We invite you to join us in the summer of 2017 to experience the Free Street Movies the way they were enjoyed a century ago at the original location on Main Street of Schoharie with a film screening including the film that started it all in 1917, The Awakening of Helena Ritchie, on loan from the Library of Congress. And at the Scribner exhibit at the Old Stone Fort, you'll be able to see for yourself the world's first outdoor talkie projector built by Ed Scribner himself. Help celebrate this remarkable 100-year anniversary of the Schoharie Free Street Movies and celebrate Schoharie history and celebrate cinema history.